On this episode of Mike Drop Dallas, we're talking about the March Madness of food. That's right. We're joined by Mike McLeod, the CEO of the World Food Championships, which are going on right now at a fair park. You are not going to want to miss it. He also gives us a couple of good local barbecue recommendations. But first, we hear from Russ Brandon on the XFL and the Arlington Renegades starting up in February. And from Katie Wegner of Genesco Sports on the power of sports sponsorships and Dallas as a home field advantage for sports business. All that and much more on episode six of season two. Let's drop the mic and let's go. Welcome to Mike Drop Dallas, everybody, the official podcast of the Dallas Sports Commission. Kevin Sullivan here, joined by Dallas Sports Commission Executive Director Monica Paul and our on-air producer, Next Level Marcus Carr. Thanks for listening, watching on YouTube, following us. Monica, let's start with the passage of the Brimer Bill on Tuesday of this week, Election Day. Uh, and what that this is a big deal. We had Brian Llewellyn of Fair Park First uh, on, on a few weeks ago to talk about this. Uh, hundreds of millions of dollars coming from tourist tax uh, revenue that will be directed to improve facilities at at Fair Park, including the Cotton Bowl uh, and the Memorial Coliseum. But much more to it than that. This is big news, uh, uh, Monica. W- let's start there. Oh, this is a big win, Sully. Um, you know, something that Brian and his team and other city officials have been working really hard on. Um, you know, they're. Fair Park hasn't had a lot of uh, upgrades in, in recent years. And uh, I think uh, for our standpoint at the Sports Commission, uh, some of the facilities that they have out there, whether it's Automobile, Centennial, the Coliseum, Cotton Bowl uh, Stadium, uh, have the biggest uh, opportunity for us to continue to bring sporting events in. And uh, one of the areas that's really important for us right now is the internet op- opportunity to get the International Broadcast Center for the FIFA World Cup in 2026. And in order to do that, uh, all of those buildings, and there's a few others that haven't been mentioned, uh, really need to be, the infrastructure needs to be upgraded. You're talking electrical, you're talking connectivity, uh, fiber, uh, broadcast capabilities, HVAC, all of that kind of stuff. So a really exciting uh, time this week. Uh, commend everybody who really worked through this. Uh, you know, our offices are out there, so it's really kind of fun to, to see this happen. And it'll be kind of... S- fun to kind of watch this progress. I I really think the day after the vote, they said, Monica, okay, we're starting the plans. We have the plans. We know what's next. So in addition to Fair Park, uh, you know, I think it's important to have our convention center from a downtown standpoint because that bribery bill also provided a lot of funding for our, our new convention center, uh, really hoping that uh, that's going to transform downtown, really connect to Cedars, be a little bit more walkable, have a little bit more things down there for any of the conventions and sporting events that we uh, we bring to town because uh, we do have some major sporting events that utilize the convention center. So really exciting times for Dallas uh, moving forward. You know, I've lived in lots of places. Nobody thinks big like Dallas does, that that entrepreneurial spirit that we have here, the the bold vision, the we can do anything kind of a mentality. And I think that's what we're seeing here, looking down the road. This will help in a, in a lot of ways, sports and non-sports uh, alike. So 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 way to go. Uh, now, Monica, we can tell you're battling through a, a cold. That's also yep. kind of how you roll all the time as the hardest working woman in uh, executive in in uh, show business. Uh, the World Cup trophy, speaking of uh, the, the the World Cup coming in 2026, uh, the World Cup trophy tour came through Dallas last weekend. Tell us about that. Oh, yeah, that was very, very exciting. Uh, one of three spots here in the United States. Uh, L.A., Dallas, and then New York, uh, where the World Cup trophy came. Uh, The plane, uh, Coca-Cola, sponsors this World Cup trophy tour. An entire plane carrying the trophy uh, came into Dallas on Sunday. Gave gave, uh, the the public um, and the city officials and leadership and those very excited about uh, Qatar and the, what the World Cup means, a chance to see that trophy and really get excited because uh, we're only a week or so away, a little over a week away from the World Cup starting in Qatar. So for us, it, it kind of further accentuates, being one of those three cities uh, really kind of further accentuates, I think, where we may stand in the soccer landscape and what FIFA and, and their their corporate partners may think about Dallas as a market. 
uh, because we still have big decisions left for FIFA to make in terms of where that final is going to be held, where is that semifinal is going to be held, where is that international broadcast uh, center, referee headquarters. So uh, to be able to share that with the public was pretty fun, and uh, I had a chance to, to speak and uh, uh, talk to, uh, well, actually Governor Abbott was there as well, um, and uh, a lot of Coca-Cola officials and then our leadership team too that uh, definitely was a, a major part of our our bid to get the World Cup here, but uh, you know, I had a chance to speak and uh, I, I didn't have anything prepared. But I don't know. Whenever you start talking about FIFA World Cup 2026, I think I could just start spewing for 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 hours. So it's just uh, exciting the the opportunity ahead for us. Yeah, it's fun to daydream about what is, what it's going to be like. You, you're also well into the planning for the 2023 NCAA Women's Basketball Final Four. Uh, what else? Tell us about that. And what else is happening at the Sports Commission? Yeah, well, uh, actually, the NCAA is in town this week, uh, part of our November uh, LOC planning meeting. So planning is well, well underway. Uh, we'll be announcing some of our Title IX and DEI initiatives uh, soon. Uh, we've got a Read to the Final Four program that is being launched within a lot of uh, independent school districts here uh, within the area. So that's very exciting to be able to give back to the community. We've uh, identified the location where we're going to do uh, put a new court down uh, with one of the parks and rec. So uh, ticket sales have gone very well. And uh, one of the things that we really have to remember is that this is uh, three championships, not just one. So a D2, D3 uh, is joining the D1 championship. So uh, while we've been focusing on D1, we're going to have to focus here uh, soon on uh, getting those D2 and D3 tickets out there and providing other opportunities for the, for kids that uh, – I uh, haven't had had that, and uh, I have to commend. Uh, we've got some great partners in, in the Dallas Mavericks uh, in their uh, girl empowerment program, gym uh, uh, program is what they call it. Uh, the Dallas Wings are a great partner of ours. So there's a lot of synergies that are going on right now. And while we're planning for 2023, uh, actually next week, we have our bid presentation for 2028 to 2031 Women's Final Four. So uh, the Women's Basketball Committee, Committee will be in town Monday through Wednesday. So uh, crossing our fingers to seeing uh, what we're going to bring out of the hat here for uh, that presentation because uh, uh, it's a little unique while you're actually planning and, uh, planning for one to be bidding on another one. Well, you are extremely skilled at having multiple balls up in the air at one time. So way to go uh, with all that. Back in a moment to talk with Russ Brandon of the XFL. But first, over to Rachel with a word from one of our sponsors. Join us for the ultimate running weekend at the 2022 BMW Dallas Marathon Festival, December 9th through the 11th. Register your corporate group or team today. Two-person half marathon relay, five-person marathon relay, and 5K team challenge options available perfect for team building. Bring your company out and enjoy all the energy and excitement surrounding the BMW Dallas Marathon Festival this December. Contact groups at rundallas.com for more info. We are now pleased to be joined by Russ Brandon, president of league and football operations for the XFL. That means Russ manages day-to-day -day operations of the league while directing strategic planning for both the business and football sides of the house on both the league and team levels. Before this, he was the COO of Pagula Sports and Entertainment, which meant that Russ was the president of both the Buffalo Bills and the Buffalo Sabres. Welcome to Mike Drop Dallas, Russ. Thanks, Kevin. Great to be with you all. So, Russ, uh, the XFL returns in February of 2023 with eight teams, including the Arlington Renegades, playing in Choctaw Stadium. Uh, Lee has also established Arlington as a hub. What does that What does that mean for the XFL and uh, it moving forward? Oh, we're so excited to be, you know, spending a significant amount of time in in Arlington. Um, <clears throat> it all starts with the ownership group of the Rangers, you know, with with Ray and Neil, and and then Sean Decker, who's been an amazing uh, friend and colleague as we built this over the last year. Um, to move to Arlington. So we're going to be spending a significant amount of time in Arlington. Uh, we have a centralized performance facility with multiple practice venues that we're not only going to work out of for the preseason, but also during the entire season. Um, Choctaw Stadium will serve as an in-week practice facility for both the Arlington and the Houston teams. And then we have surrounding high schools. And as you all know, your high schools <laughs> in Texas are nicer than most 1AA or Division One facilities. So 
you know, we're using Northwest ISD Stadium, South Lake Carroll Dragon Stadium, and Vernon Newsom Stadium. <clears throat> We've been working with um, all the ADs. You know, Phil has been great, great uh, partners with us. And, you know, you're going to have a, a, a large contingent of coaches and football executives and football players from January through May in the Arlington uh, area. And, you know, being right next to the uh, the Cowboys facility and everything the great Jones family has done. Um, you know, we're just, we're privileged to be there. Well, you're definitely right about our uh, high school uh, uh, stadiums. Uh, you know, that Friday night lights, I think it's something that uh, surprises everybody who comes to the Metroplex of, or Texas in general of like, really? It's That's amazing. Me? It's amazing. And, and quite frankly, you know, we looked long and hard throughout the whole country of opportunities and it kept coming back to Arlington. It kept coming back to the great management at, at the Rangers and Sean Decker and Jared Schrum and, and that group. Um, and it just makes all the sense in the world for us. We want to give our athletes the best in uh, training facilities, the best in-season experience possible when it comes to performance science, nutrition, all those things um, to give them the best chance to succeed. And... Arlington is the best situation for us, and we're looking forward to being great community partners. Well, you kind of took my next question was uh, why Arlington, <laughs> but I think you kind of uh, you kind of <laughs> answered that one. So I appreciate that. Um, you know, we get a for the sports commission, we get a lot of opportunity to engage with the community, and you know, have people, kids, that be able to experience sport in different different ways. Uh, and I've had a chance to talk to some of your your staff that have uh, recently come on board that I, that are from here and the local market and I've worked with in the past. So the excited that they were able to join y'all over at the XFL. Uh, but are, are there any initiatives that, uh, you know, have been planned or that, that may be there of uh, how you're going to engage with the community moving forward? Yeah, we're going to be very great, very good community partners. We're in the process of, of lighting that all up. Now um, we want to be a, a, a major stakeholder in Arlington in the surrounding areas um, with a variety of, Programming when it comes to um, youth initiatives, um, flag, uh, everything that relates to the football ecosystem. Um, so we have a great team that we're building in Arlington. Every market will have um, on-site staff. Um, you know, you you know Bianca, who's working yeah. with you, and she's a, a great member of our staff in Arlington. We, we, we're building all the staffs out. So we have the league staff, and then we'll have on-the-ground staffs in each market. Um, but obviously... You know, we all embark on Arlington come early January, and I'll be personally moving there, and many of our staff will be moving there for pretty much the entire time through our championship weekend. So looking forward to hearing all the great restaurants and looking for a place to live and um, all the great things that you have to offer down there. Russ, we know Bob Stoops, of course, will be the head coach of the, of the Arlington Renegades. <laughs> What else do you want uh, uh, our listeners to to know about the style of play, the fan experience, about what it'll be like with Renegades football? Well, you know, when you look at Ted, when you look at our staffs in general, um, I, I'm it, it's so proud, and that and that starts with our ownership group. We have incredible ownership with obviously Dwayne Johnson and, and Danny Garcia, our chairwoman, and Jerry Cardinal from. Redburn Entertainment, who Danny always refers to as the rock of his industry, and look what he's done. And he's been a part of uh, Legends with with the Jones family and uh, Yes Network and uh, just bought AC Milan and all the different things that Jerry's done in the sports world and given us the opportunity to build out staffs um, that we're very proud of. And, and no no prouder than having Coach Stoops in, in the Arlington market. Um, we, he's obviously football royalty and a legend in our game. And, you know, we expect that, you know, he's going to bring all the, all the details and comprehension that he's brought to, you know, his teams in the past. Um, you know, we continue to look Kevin at a variety of things to you know, make the league more and very exciting when it comes to dynamic play. And <clears throat> you may know, we brought Dean Blandino back to oversee all of our rules and officiating. He's been working with not only our coaches, but also with Troy Vincent in the National Football League to look at different innovations and opportunities um, to bring to bear as we move forward. We will be a league of innovation, but we will not be a league of being gimmicky. So we're going to look at different things to um, not only on the field, but when it comes to our content creation, 
how are we affecting the broadcast with our great partners at ESPN, ABC, and Disney to bring the, the game to our fans, maybe in a little bit of a different way. Um, we have an open slate, so we can we can work at things, see what works, see what doesn't. Um, but, you know, between our coaches, when you talk about – in Texas alone, when you look at Bob Stoops in Dallas, Wade Phillips in Houston, Heinz Warren in San Antonio, just alone, you know, some really tremendous football – minds that are there, Rod Woodson in Las Vegas, Jim Hazlitt in Seattle, who's, you know, a couple time coach of the year, uh, Terrell Buckley in Orlando, Anthony Becht, former first rounder um, in, in St. Louis, Reggie Barlow in DC. So, you know, really, really proud of who we've been able to bring in um, to lead our franchises. And, and uh, I think you'll be really proud of what coach Stoops brings to Dallas in Arlington. You know, you, you, uh, it's the Arlington Renegades, not the Dallas Renegades. I'm yes, sure that was done. I'm sure that was done intentionally. You know, <laughs> not every not every pro football team who plays in Arlington is called by the Arlington name. Tell us how that decision was made. You know, we 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 looked at a variety of things. Work with um, you know, your your mayor Jim Ross is is an incredible guy in Arlington, um, and obviously Sean Decker and the team. We just felt, listen, well, our roots are there. Um, right, right in Arlington, and it made all the sense in the world to give the respect to your community, what you're building, what the Jones family have done there as well, um, and along with with the ownership of the Rangers. So, just really proud to right. be the Arlington Renegades. Long history of you know spring football working and not working in in the U.S. Uh, what differentiates the XFL from the USFL, which played its first season uh, earlier this year? You know, we're just looking really, Kevin, to add to the football ecosystem. And, you know, from our standpoint, you know, the more football, the better. You know, we wish them well, obviously, as, as they've launched. You know, I know Daryl really well, former Cowboy, who's doing a great job over there as well. So, you know, from our standpoint, you know, our relationship with the NFL, when we look at different ways to affect the game when it comes to rules, innovation, officiating, <clears throat> working with the um, underserved populations in the game, trying to assist movement in, the, in whether it's more individuals in officiating or athletic training or performance science as an example. You know, I think our relationship with uh, ESPN Disney um, is in ABC is really important as well. All 43 game windows will be on linear television. Um, we have a condensed season, which really leads to helping the athlete, which is why we're all here, um, get to the next level. We want to see an Arlington renegade go on to play in the National Football League. Um, just look at a couple of weeks back, you had two XFL alumni, and Taylor Heineke and P.J. Walker beat Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers, right? So there is a need for spring football. Um, the numbers show that. The the ratings show that. Um but it's about development. We we want to see our athletes, if they wish, to go on and continue um, to play at the highest level in the NFL, and and we will work uh, diligently and passionately with them to make that happen. So, Russ, uh, tell our our listeners how do we get tickets? How do fans, uh, Renegade fans, get tickets? Well, season tickets officially go on sale on November seventeenth. Uh, we have been taking season ticket deposits, um, and we've been going through the conversion process as well. So. You know, we finally were able to um, un unveil the brands last week. Back in Arlington in July, it was a really great experience to be at Texas Live, which is an amazing facility, yeah. with Dwayne and Danny and announce our cities, our venues, and our coaches. And then last week, we were able to unveil our brands and our logos um, which we're really proud of and uh, working with Under Armour, who's an official partner of ours. And then very soon we will be unveiling our uniforms and we will be in Arlington uh, first week in January and be ready to go for training camp. So season tickets on sale, November 17th. <laughs> All right, listeners, November 17th, uh, get to get your uh, Arlington Renegades tickets. Uh, well, Russ, thank you for joining us. We'll definitely keep an eye on uh, the XFL and what you're doing out in Arlington and obviously cheer on our, our renegades here from a DFW uh, standpoint and uh, look forward to a very uh, successful season starting in February. So thank you for joining us.
It's a privilege to be with you. Thank you for having me. And now over to Rachel for a word from one of our sponsors. Love lacrosse? Need a part-time gig? IWLCA is looking for workers to help out at the IWLCA President's Cup and IWLCA debut, November 18th through the 20th. Open positions include setup slash breakdown, field marshalling, Gatorade, and hospitality. Spend your weekend with us in Dallas. Contact Rena Weiss at rweiss at elitetournaments.com to learn more. Again, that's Rena Weiss at rweiss at elitetournaments.com. And now we are really pleased to be joined by Katie Wegner, Vice President at Genesco Sports. She's also the president of the DFW Chapter of Women in Sports and Events, one of our favorite uh, groups that we like to feature here on Mike Drop Dallas. Uh, Katie uh, started with Genesco back in 2003 after graduating from SMU. She left in 2012, went and did some other cool things, came back last year as Vice President. Katie, welcome to Mike Drop Dallas. Thank you, Kevin. Great to be here. Appreciate it. Yeah, you know, we go way back with uh, Genesco, Monica, uh, and I both do. We John Tatum is a you know, friend of the pod for sure. Uh, but, you know, well, we used to think of Genesco as a sports sponsorship agency, but I know it has become way more than that. Tell us about Genesco Sports and, and all that you offer uh, these days. Yeah, for sure. You know, as you mentioned, starting my career there and coming back um, now, Genesco has definitely grown. When I first started, we were a pretty small agency kind of say with a lot of hustle and heart, right? You know, 40 people. Now we have over 150 people and are really recognized as one of the top sports marketing consultancy agencies in, in the industry. So, you know, I think a lot of that is attributed to John and his team of staying focused on our core and, and what we do, but strategically building other pillars of the business like hospitality, GSE Live, premiums, sweepstakes engagements that really help continue drive our clients' business. You know, for us, we always... Our number one goal is to develop sales and marketing solutions for our corporate clients. And so how do we do that? You know, it's through the solutions we provide, the savings we provide them, the value we give them through their activations, and then the growth that it drives for their business and their revenue. And so, you know, we, those are our cores. And then we always wrap that with the exceptional client service we do that's really just put Genesco um, at the top of, of the industry and, and everything that we're doing in the sponsorship space. Change and disruption has always been a part of, of sports and sports marketing. What, what's the latest? What trends are you seeing these days? You know, it's a great question. I think when we think about the types of sponsorships and the trends that we're seeing in that, it's really a diversification of the types of sponsorships that brands are getting into, right? We used to always think of getting into the top three or four professional um, leagues like an NFL and MLB. Um, and, you know, look at our client T-Mobile. They've got a huge MLB partnership. We've seen their branding and their logos all over the place the last few weeks with the World Series. Um, but they also have partnerships in Drone League and esports. And so it's really making sure that brands are not just talking to a singular audience um, and they're really getting different um, types of, of consumers that they're engaging in addition, you know, I think soccer is an interesting, we all love soccer here, obviously, in North Texas with everything in the hype around World Cup in North America 2026. But, you know, we look at this younger generation that's growing up. I've worked on brands for years that have done sponsorship or soccer, excuse me, sponsorships to really focus on smaller niche markets and consumers. But now we're seeing them. Soccer is a mainstream NWSL. I did two sponsorship strategies this year for different clients and NWSL and soccer rose to the top as opportunities for brands to consider. So I think that's been um, really interesting for us to keep our, you know, um, on the pulse of what's going on in the different non, I don't say non-traditional, but kind of new cutting edge sponsorship opportunities. Um, and sort of last trend, I think if we think about the types of sponsorships, really seeing everything go more digital, right? It's not the old track signage, A-frame signage at arenas and things that you see. You know, we've seen that for a while, but it's really making sure that we're creating these platforms and activations that allow consumers to engage with the brands when and where they're consuming, which is a digital first, you know, world now. And so how are we doing that with the types of sponsorship activations we bring to the table for our clients? Well, you've worked on many sponsorship activations throughout your career. What's a cool one? That's, that stands out? You know, I mean, yes, I've been very fortunate to see a, a lot of brands do things for the first time. And, you know, we've really pushed um, leagues to allow us to do new things. I think one of the coolest ones 
really was around Pepsi and the halftime show. You know, Pepsi had been an NFL partner, took that away from Coke back in the early 2000s. And, you know, every year, five, seven years when that was up for renewal, we had to find ways to evolve that partnership and keep it fresh. And one of the things that, that they did actually during midterm of, of a, a contract was renegotiate to get the, the halftime show, right? The coveted NFL halftime show. It, it's grown to become its own. I mean, people tune into the Super Bowl just to watch that these days, right? And so Pepsi saw an opportunity. How are we going to be at that cross section of culture and sport, right? We're a soda brand, you know, what's good and bad said about us in the industry um, and what we do. So how do we really do that? And so being the leader and creating that ownable position and platform of the halftime show was great. And part of their strategy then was that they had to pick the talent, right? NFL took that power kind of out of NFL so that they could make sure it aligned with their brand. And then they also created a unique activation to give a private showing and rehearsal to their customers and consumers. So not just making it this logo brand that we all see during the, the Super Bowl, but finding a moment that Wednesday before Super Bowl where they can take their top 100 customer, CEO of Kroger, different you know, partners, um, and they get to go see the behind the scenes experience. So that's a pretty cool way to to get both, you know, the branding and the activation around a sponsorship. You, you've had a great year at Genesco. You've added some big name sponsors, Lowe's, Little Caesars come to mind. What's the key to a winning pitch to bring on new business? Yeah, I mean, I think one, it, it People, um, you know, relationships, I think, are key, right? You know, we think about the industry and, and always, you know, you never know where your current client's going to go next and what door that's going to open and offer. And I always say we get the good clients, we get the hard clients, but they're all going to be clients and we want them to stay clients, um, it, whether that's with their current job or other. So I think that that's really important. Um, you know, for us, it, this it's been a great year, a banner year for Genesco. We're really proud of all the things we've done. Um, but for us, it's just been that consistency, right? We've really just stayed true to who we are as an agency and, and kept pushing forward the things that that we think we can to deliver for our clients. And it's paid off when maybe other, um, you know, other agencies or brands have been looking to evolve what they're doing that we've been able to, you know, obviously reap some of those benefits and be a great um, agency record and solution for a lot of corporate brands. So Katie, what is it that makes sports sponsorship really just so powerful? Oh man, Monica, you know, I mean, it really is about the connectivity that sponsorships bring forth, right? I mean, the ability for brands to bring in consumer experience, um, you know, we always show our, our favorite diagram of that connectivity spot of what it is, but sports now are, are more than just the the two hours, four hours played on a field, a pitch, a court, and it really is about the ability to connect with um, fans off the court. And so we think that sports have offered the power of being that cross intersection. I say that a lot um, of what it is, whether that's culture, community, art, fashion, sport, you know, we've really allowed sports to become the center of that, which has been great for brands um, as they've evolved in the space. So I know you have offices at other places, but Dallas is your headquarters. Uh, do you consider being in Dallas a, a home field advantage? For sure, right? You know, I mean, I can't speak for John. I know he he wanted to be in Texas. And, you know, if there was a strategy and, and thinking ahead of what North Texas was going to become when he started Genesco in, in 1994. But, you know, for sure, I mean, Selfishly, it sure is nice for me who I travel a lot. I don't have to do all those red red eye flights, right? You know, um, I can I can get anywhere in three hours. But I think, you know, North Texas is such um, the the mecca for sports, right? You've got the great owners like the Jerry Jones and everybody here, um, and all the great work you guys are doing to bring all these events here. So we definitely think it is um, an advantage for us. But you know, it's also important for us to feel we have offices and people near and where our clients are. So we have a pretty, you know, deep bench of where our offices are, but North Texas is always home and, and we feel it's been a, a great advantage as, as we move forward. Well, Katie, you also created something pretty special here for our DFW area. Uh, you're also the president of DFW uh, chapter of women in sports and events, so our wise chapter. Um, how are we doing in the area of opportunities for women, um, you know, here in, well, North, yeah, here in North Texas. You know, I mean, I think we're doing really well. I think it's actually pretty interesting that um, Dallas and North Texas was one of the last major metro metropolitan areas not to have a wise chapter. You know, when we applied for our chapter, um, 
there were markets like a Memphis or a Twin Cities that already had chapters. And so we definitely felt that there was a need right back in 2018 when we applied to become an official WISE chapter um, that we needed the chapter here. But as we think about the advancement of women, the opportunity for women in the space, I think DFW North Texas is, you know, definitely on the on the forefront of what they're doing. I mean, look at obviously Sent Marshall and what the Mavericks have done, having, you know, the first female and African American CEO um, of a team. And so I think is there's always more to be done, right? There's always more that we can be doing. Um, and we think that WISE is a great way for women, but also men to get involved in understanding this, the business of, of, that we're trying to advance and what women's needs are and how they come and show up to the workplace um, and what they can offer to different teams, whether that's on the team side, the property side, the agency side, or, or whatever they are choosing to do in their professional career. Katie, we have uh, a number of listeners that that aspire to get into sports. You, you referenced uh, earlier that you left Genesco and came back uh, eight or nine years later. Talk a little bit about how you managed your career and what advice you would have for young people wanting to get into the sports uh, business. Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, for me, um, it was always staying hungry, right? Driving with passion, um, getting in the space. Um, you know, I, I don't want to say I sort of fell into the space, but I was definitely um, wanting to be, always wanted to be in sports, actually wanted to be an in-house lawyer and, and contract law and work for someone like the Dallas Cowboys and and sort of fell into the agency side, you know, obviously showing my age, I'm a lot older than the sports management programs that were out there that now a lot of the universities have. So, you know, I think for the younger people that are looking to get in the space or maybe move around in the space, it's, you know, stay hungry, be passionate about what you do, um, really focus, find your opportunity, and then never stop learning and growing, right? Always find a way um, to take something from every every opportunity. I go to a lot of the WISE events thinking, oh, I can't wait to see who I meet and who I network, you know, and it's humbling when when women are, are, are come up to me and say, oh, I want to talk to you, right? But it's, I'm always still looking to grow and talk to people and learn from other people. And it's never just about getting to the top or getting somewhere and being complacent. You know, it, it's a long mountain and journey up. Um, and we're, we're going to have moments. You know, I tell people, don't don't get bogged down in the set, setbacks, right? You may take two steps back or you may take a two-year plateau in your career and just say, I'm good at being X, Y, Z for now. Um, but when you feel that drive and you feel that passion and that urge to do more, um, you know, embrace it and find your allies in your village and your community that support you um, in doing that. Well, Katie, thanks for uh, for joining us today. I really appreciate you making the time. I'm really glad that you highlighted the importance of relationship building and lifelong learning uh, and curiosity in the course of, of the conversation. It was great having you on. Thank you, Kevin and Monica. It's a pleasure to be here. You'll have a great day. And now welcome back to Mike Drop Dallas, Mike McLeod. Of the, he's the president and CEO of the World Food Championships, a gig he's had since 2012. Monica, we've done, by my count, I think 74 previous episodes, which would mean somewhere in the neighborhood of 215 guests. I think having Mike on, I think it was episode 37, one of our favorite guests, pr primarily because he's a fun guy to talk to. And we're talking about barbecue and, and food. Mike is the marketing guru when it comes to food. And he's a certified barbecue judge, which makes him the most interesting guy at every party he goes to. Uh, he's also a Tennessee volunteer. Sorry about the Georgia game, Mike. A great year for the, for the, for the Vols. Uh, I know you're riding high. Georgia is the new Alabama, I think. So, th so that oh. was no, uh, no, no shame in losing to them. Monica thinks Texas is the new Alabama. That's another conversation. But welcome back, uh, Mike. Good to have you back here on the mic drop. Great to be back, uh, Monica. You can you can thank that when our uh, beloved uh, cousin, son, whatever he is, Arch Manning, comes over to Texas. Then y'all will be back in the glory stages. Then. Hey, I have. But, to yeah, I have to tell you that uh, actually I wore a Tennessee shirt on uh, Saturday uh, nice. during the game nice. because I lost a bet to a good friend of mine who uh, is, oh boy, big Tennessee fan. And uh, I bet Alabama was going to win. So obviously Tennessee won. So I had to wear the shirt last week and midway through the game, I was already getting text messages of take that shirt off, take that shirt off. You're not doing this any good. So uh, I'm, I'm well, cheering what for Tennessee. What what most people don't realize is that was the setup. We fully expect to see Georgia again in the national championship, and we yeah. no one beats anybody twice. So we we're going to take it all. 
Okay. Uh, we just we needed to get that that one loss out of the way and get their minds uh, on something else. All right. Well, I like that positiveness uh, that you have, Mike. So uh, let's talk World Food Championships, uh, yeah. made up of multiple competitions with more than I think over a thousand chefs. Uh, what can uh, attendees expect, Mike? So this is the place you want to go if you want to see Food Network on steroids. Um, we we create the largest indoor kitchen arena. It's You might be able to get a glimpse of it behind me. Uh, we run through um, kind of like a March Madness tournament of food over the next five days. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we, we do the opening round. Saturday, Sunday, we do the finals in 10 categories. So if it's barbecue, bacon, seafood, burger, steak, soup, rice noodle, vegetarian, um, just 10 iconic uh uh, genres of food we've got 320 some teams from 40 states and 10 countries uh, about 37 of our teams this year are international teams so our international division is coming back strong we're happy to see that uh, travel restrictions have uh, really improved for this year last year we only had four countries represented we got uh, 10 this year so um, really excited we just kicked off three minutes ago with the uh, brand new category of rice noodles uh, we, we don't, I don't know how that one's going to turn out, but, uh, I'm, I'm sure the, um, the food sport food champs are bringing their a game. We've got master judges here looking at them on the front side. Then we got certified eat judges judging them on the back side. So we're going to come out of here with 10 great teams to go into the finals this weekend. And we're going to do it uh, nine more times, uh, over the next three days. Well, Mike, I think Andrew from my team might be doing rice and noodles. Uh, he mentioned it to me yesterday. So he said he was, he got a certification in his training, I think, earlier this week. So I think oh, he's, he's pretty excited. Yeah, yeah, he's going to be a judge. And I, right. I can tell people, if you are listening to this, you need to get out to that World Food Championships because these chefs are amazing. And if you have the opportunity to judge, which I did last year, oh, the food is uh, quite tasty. So uh, I, I, I enjoyed myself last year. Um, well, the you know that the best table in the house is the grazing table. Yes, yes. Uh, which is the one that uh, me, you, and our friends get to go see. We get to actually choose what we want to eat instead of being served uh, what the dishes are from the better. So um, anybody that comes along with you, Monica, uh, can be my guest at the grazing table. Okay. And we'll have a good time. All right. So, Mike, I know you get creative every year. You and your team um, introducing, well, you just mentioned rice and noodles and do new things uh to the championship and the whole entire weekend to really engage you know the community and uh, maybe even you know local um chefs or teams or uh, schools and, and that sort of thing what's new this year oh we've got so many good things i'll try to hit three or four real quick um tonight we're doing a welcome reception we brought it back um uh, now that we're we're post-covid and we have 10 high school teams from Texas who are making uh, dishes for us. And we're going to turn that into a competition. It's going to be a bite of the night. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Our competitors can judge uh, high school culinary students. So it's going to be, going to be a, a benefit for Dallas College, which we're very proud of, uh, and also for the North Texas uh, Food Bank. Uh, secondly, for consumers, we've added a lot of programming this year. Uh, one of the things is our culinary demo stage, which is uh, brought to us by uh, Sam's Club. We have almost 33 demos going on over the next five days. So not only can you come here and see uh, up and coming chefs and some celebrity chefs trying to win part of our $300,000 prize purse, but you can learn from them some of their competition secrets because we've got about five demos going every single day. Uh, and also some, some elevated samplings like caviar uh, bumps and um, uh, some, some candied bacon bites, all kinds of goodies that, that I enjoy. Uh, and I figure that most other people enjoy too. So we're, we're going to be serving those up. We've got a best of the fest strategy going on Saturday, Sunday. We still have some tickets available to that. Anybody, you know, who wants to actually taste the dishes, but they're not a certified judge, uh, go to worldfoodchampionships.com, uh, go to our tickets page and uh, grab some of those best of the fest tickets that happens on Saturday, Sunday from noon to 2 PM each day. And then the fan favorite thing that we do every year is our bourbon queue event where we pair uh, 10 of the best pit masters in the barbecue circuit up with uh, great bourbons and whiskey. So uh, for about three hours, we, we just talk whiskey and we talk bourbon and we talk uh, barbecue. So uh, best three hours of the week. And it's going to be on the Esplanade at the at Fair Park. So it's going to be a beautiful 
uh, beautiful evening. The weather looks good. So we're very excited about that. Mike, the, the Dallas Morning News did a great story recently about the Rockwall ISD barbecue team. I, I, I had no idea this was a thing. There are 90 high school barbecue teams in the state of Texas. This definitely gives me hope for the future, knowing that our uh, our youth are, are uh, doing this. It just sort of cracks me up that there's a barbecue team, but I, but I, but I like it. Uh, tell us about, you mentioned, you talked a little bit about the high school competition, but what, what will, at a serious note, what will the kids learn? You know, we talk all the time about what kids learn from, from being on a sports team. Well, I would think this is probably pretty similar, but what do the kids learn from being part of a barbecue team and being able to compete in something as cool as the World Food Championships uh, over at well, Third Park? They really get about three incredible lessons. Uh, one is group dynamics. Um, they, they learn how to work with each other, how to be a team. That's very important, as you all know, in the, in the sports um, world. So uh, that's lesson number one. Uh, lesson number two, they get a, they get a vision uh, as to what culinary is all about, especially people from the industry, because at the heartbeat of the World Food Championships is about 2,500 individuals that are working in the industry somewhere as an executive chef, as an award-winning cook, um, as a competition team. So they get to, to rub shoulders and get tips and, and tricks from, from the best of the best and watch them uh, go head-to-head in this epic battle um, all around food in, in 10 categories. And the third thing, they, they get to meet some celebrities. Um, barbecue, in particular, is is one of our strengths. We have um, changed some of our judging processes this year to feature a barbecue panel uh, in the finals. In fact, we're going to have uh, five panels on Saturday and five panels on Sunday, and every bit of the judging is going to be done publicly. So you're going to get to see and feel and understand exactly why a dish has won $10,000. And we've got uh, on our barbecue panel... We've got five fantastic uh, pit matches. We've got Leanne Whippen, uh, who's in the Hall of Fame. We've got Famous Dave, who started Famous Dave's of America. He, he's a Hall of Famer. We got Chris Lilly, uh, who's from Alabama, uh, uh, Kingsford's uh, pit master. Uh, we've got Tuffy Stone, who is one of the original celebrity barbecue pit masters uh, on TV. And we've got Harry Sue, who is also one of the TV pit masters. So those, those five individuals, are going to be determining who our barbecue champion is this year. And it's a can't miss show. I mean, you, if you want to hear what great barbecue is about and you want to see what great barbecue is, be here Sunday because we've got probably the, the most um, notable barbecue panel uh, ever put together in, in this food sport. And they're going to be picking our next champion. So they, they get that experience, you know, and, and, one more thing about the high school. We actually have three high school competitions going on here uh, this week. One we got uh, for the welcome reception where 10 teams, culinary teams are trying to win bite of the night. On Saturday, we got the Texas High School Barbecue Challenge. We got 10 teams from Texas that are going at it in barbecue. And then on Sunday, we got the American Barbecue Challenge. We got 10 high school teams from across America that have come to Dallas uh, to compete for that title as well. So. Uh, trying to do our best to to raise the next generation, to motivate the next generation, get them into the industry. You know, this this whole event is about identifying, celebrating uh, th- these culinarians from all walks of life, because I think they have the, the most overworked, underappreciated job in America. Think about it. Over the last two years with the pandemic and the supply chain and the inflation things that we've all faced, it's not been easy to be in the restaurant business. So when when chefs come here, it's like a little reprieve. It's like a little vacation for them to to rub shoulders, hug each other, uh, be in the same room and show off their their talents, but also celebrate their passion. So that's what uh, World Food Championships is about. And it's open to the public. You don't have to be a chef to be here. Uh, You you just need to get here. And once you get in, you're going to get. Uh, free access to barbecue ranch which we're pumping out about 2,500 pounds of meat every single day uh if you leave here hungry that's your problem that's not mine uh <laughs> and, and then and then if you want to elevate your ticket and go to best of the fest or go to vip or go to bourbon Q, you got options uh and you can also go to our culinary showcase like i mentioned and, and learn from uh, leaders in the industry last time you were on mike we talked about the regional differences in barbecue across the country uh, but when you're in Dallas, you know, we love supporting our local restaurants. You're absolutely right. Uh, my my son is a 
is a is a cook at at, at uh, Monarch in Dallas. Had a great oh. run at Nick and Sam's, and he's he works his butt off. And uh, it is a, it is a tough tough way to make a living. Uh, but I got to ask you, when you're in Dallas, wh- where do you like to go for barbecue? Boy, you're going to put me on the spot like that. <laughs> I know you probably can't play favorites, but let, let's have a couple of recommendations. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what my favorites were this week. How about that? Uh, I did a little pecan lodge. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. And, and I had to go to Black's. Yep. Uh, and then uh, just the other night, I ate dinner at uh, Tazar's uh, new uh, nice uh, restaurant. He, he's a, a James Beard award-winning chef and and my god it was just it was phenomenal i i really enjoyed it got to sample a lot of things that that maybe most people don't get to sample but uh everything that that hit the table was was uh was phenomenal so those are the three for this week that i'd recommend to anybody now when you walk in is it like oh my gosh the the president and ceo of the world food championships is here a certified barbecue judge uh, do they really uh you know roll out the red carpet for you only if they know I'm coming. Yeah, a lot you go times, incognito. A lot of times I go incognito because, you know, I, I still like to eat in private sometimes. You know, I, I want to right. enjoy the food instead of talking the whole time. But, um, yeah, the, the, the chefs that like like the Tazar, I, I mean, I am black. You know, I don't want them to be blindsided, and, and we'll call them and let them know I'm coming in. And they, they, they put out a good spread. Well, Mike, it's a, been a blast having you on once again. Thank you for making the time. Everybody, go to worldfoodchampionships.com for more information and to buy tickets. The, the uh, There's a lot to take in, as Mike explained. It's going on, under, it's underway right now out at Fair Park. Uh, so thanks again to Mike McLeod for joining us. On behalf of Monica Paul and the Dallas Sports Commission, thanks to uh, our other guests, Russ Brandon and Katie Wagner. Uh, thanks to the Mike Drop production team, Icy Strain. Uh, Marcus Carr, Tony Fay at PR, ran over at Vocal Media, and of course, our showrunner, Tony Fay. Until next time, thanks for listening and watching on YouTube. So long, everybody.